Oh hey guys, you know that leather work I've been telling you about for years that makes bomb proof stuff? Well guess what? He's making knives now. All right, well, like I said, Justin Wolf from Wolf Customs, he's making knives now, which is pretty darn cool in my book. Um, if he pours his heart and soul into these knives as much as he does into his leather work, these knives are gonna completely rock. So, without further ado, no fancy buildup. Gang, I give you the Wolf Customs Razorback. Now, it comes in a sexy sheath. That's a good start right there. Um, let's start there, in fact. Let's do this out of the typical order. The retention on the sheath is insane. You can hear it pop into place, and you really have to have a good grip to get it out. Awesome. So, this video is not about the sheath, but the sheath rocks, nonetheless. Now, this knife is dirty. I've been beating the snot out of this thing for a week and a half, something like that. Here is the Wolf Customs Razorback. It's a bit unique design. It is all belly. And like I said, this knife is dirty. None of that's rust. It's gonna be pine sap and stuff, so no no worries. Now, first off on this thing, aside from the obvious uh, design on the, the, the blade itself, let's just ignore that for now. The handle. It's uh, OD micarta, if it matters, canvas micarta. But it fills the hand. It is nice. It is comfy. And I can say there's one other knife I have that's up there with the comfiness of this, but this thing is awesome. I mean, it, it's like it is made to fit in your hand. I have big hands, guys. So, ex most extra large size gloves do not work with my hands. So, and that this, that's saying a lot. For a little knife like this to fill my hand the way it does, it's awesome. I love it. So the contoured shape, I believe he's kind of um, modified the skookum handle a little bit to fit his his desire, and it, it works. It rocks. I love it. Um, now, like I said, before we get to too much of the nitty gritty, and there's a lot of sun. Hang on. All right. Before we get too much into the nitty gritty, <clears throat> first off, this is the third knife Justin has ever made. So. Um, this guy's talented. I have used this for a week and a half, some, give or take a few days, doesn't matter. Um, and I've used it every day and several of those days all day long. No hand fatigue, nothing. As far as the knife goes, it is all belly. Um, it was a learning curve for me to get, get kind of used to this. Um, but it, it works great. Um, I'm really looking forward to hunting season so I can actually uh, put this to flesh, as sick as that sounds. Um, because I think it will be an awesome skinner. Um, but uh, cutting edge is two and a half inches. Um, knife overall is six and a half, seven inches, I believe. Um, I don't have a spec sheet on it, but you know, it's kind of guesstimation on my part, and I probably should have brought a ruler out here, but um, yeah, you guys get the idea. Uh, it's got a sharpened spine, throws sparks like crazy. You guys will see that. Um, quite frankly, part of this video is already filmed, so. Um, yeah, it's, that's part of the reason why this knife's dirty. But uh, anyway, so um, without further ado, Wolf Customs Razorback. Let's get to work. All right, guys. Well, this is what we're going to be doing a one stick fire and probably a bow drill set out of, too. Excuse me. It's been a busy morning. I'm thirsty. But um, anyway, let's. Uh, Get it on. This is just, if you care, it's a tulip poplar or yellow poplar. Huh, not bad. Probably won't work too terribly good for a bow drill set. It's got that pithy center. Been there, done that.
right through a knot, no problem. Follows the grain of the wood really well. And yeah, I know being up on a platform like this is causing me more work, but the ground's wet. Don't really have any other platform to do this on. So might as well. That knot gave a little bit of resistance. Let's see. Absolutely no damage to the edge. Absolutely none. Things performing like a champ. You can see that. Chewing into that knot. Right through. And still, no damage to the edge. It's got some pretty grain in it. See the camera. Yeah. Now I will say I have been using this knife for three days, I think. And this is not a critique at all. This just like with any knife, there's a, a break-in period for you to actually get used to it. I mean, unless you have, you know, godlike knife skills. Unlike me, because I don't. Um, anyway, the geometry of this blade, it is really unique in that just constant belly from, you know, hilt to stern or whatever. Um, but it does amazing work. I'm still not quite 100% used to it yet. but I love it. Not bad. Pretty good curls. All right, I'm gonna get further underway here, just to kind of save you guys' viewing time, and I'll bring you back. All right. Well, that's a little bit further in. Um, yeah, I approve. <laughs> it takes. Uh, there's a learning curve to get the angle right, but it really seems to be that the sweet spot's right about here, as far as getting curls go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, break the rest of this down and uh, get a few more curls and we'll see if we can't start a fire guys And typical to tulip poplar 
It doesn't split very well once it gets down to finer pieces. But that's okay. Burns well regardless. See what I mean? This likes to break out. Tip stout. One way I overcome with tulip poplar, the fact it doesn't like to uh, split and break down into the proper kindling size, um, is I make thick curls as a secondary, you know, instead of pencil lead size. This knife is great. Don't look, Justin. No damage to the tip or to the butt of the knife. pit we are. It's really easy to control. You know, the most Scandi blades, now this one does have a micro bubble on it. You know, it, uh, it has what I like to call a Scandi overbite, where when it starts to dig into the wood, all it wants to do is go further and further in. Um, this is really easy to adjust width of, of the cut. So I mean, if you want to go fine, you can go fine, or if you want to go deep, go deep. It doesn't really fight you either direction. It just goes where you want it. Really. I like it. Pass on that test.
Well, that, my friends, is a successful one stick fire. Like I mentioned before, I use a piece of that poplar I split out for my fire over here uh, to make up a bow drill set. Um, I don't know if I'll take it to, to uh, coal or not. It's kind of time dependent, but uh, anyway, this is just a quarter of uh, another piece that I did for the fire. Break it down for the spindle. This thing is great bite. But like I said earlier, it's a great controllable bite. Look at those chunks of wood fly off of there. Which is the whole purpose behind uh, uh, make, doing a bow drill as far as a knife test goes in my mind is not to see if you can achieve a coal. It's to see how well it does carving tasks and notches and stuff like that. And when you get down to the finer work, you just ease up on the angle a little bit. It doesn't want to go anywhere. It doesn't want to cut, come out of the grain. Or it doesn't want to go deeper either. I mean, it's, it's great. Tea is boiling. <sighs> Key dokey are the chokey campers. Sorry, I got multiple things going on at once. Thing I will say, this handle is comfy. Like I said I've been using this for about three days, something like that, and not once has my hand been fatigued. Even when you come out to the tip, the angle of that belly, you don't really lose any torque or cutting power but basically man this works great for this man this is awesome I'm seriously not blowing smoke guys these can these cuts are so incredibly controllable the bite is great and change the angle of your cut mid slice Basically, I bring it to a point like that, then take my hearth board and simply just find the spot I want to burn in. And dig out a hole. That's it. Get it matched up and bingo. All right, hang on. Yeah. 
It's a decent burn in. Mosquitoes. Got a fire right next to me, they're still bothering me. Slices wood cross grain really well. Just want to show off a couple of notches. Let's get this down. Um, it does stop cuts really, really good. Again, like I said, it's extremely controllable. So it's not perfect by any means. That's a that's a user error, not a knife error. All right, let's just uh, expand that out just a little bit. I just want to make a, a flat edge for like a, I don't know, a figure four deadfall or something. Nice and squared up, well, about. Squares it off nicely. At least for my skill level. Now, if I was wanting to make a tent stake, or actually in my case a tarp stake, I don't really use a tent.
don't really know if that's uh, bushcraft approved, but this is the technique I've been using for years. Point it on three sides on one end. Kind of square up the top so it doesn't split on you, split out on you, at least not as bad. And then choose your backside, which is usually the part where the bark is left. And make a tie off point. Works for me. All right, you guys have seen the uh, one stick fire already. Well, depending on how I edit this video, if you haven't seen it, you will. But uh, let's just go ahead and throw a few more sparks now that it's getting darker. So it'll show up just a little bit on camera. The lava this thing throws. Works well. All right, gang. Well, I don't want to run this whole throwing sparks thing into the ground, but it is a huge complaint of a lot of knives. So I wanted to highlight this because this Wolf Customs Razorback excels at this. And I want to show you something. Um, you guys know I'm a fan of the Swedish Fire Steel style ferro rod. Well. I don't really touch the the other models, the more American models, the you know the Firesteel.com, etc., etc. Much simply because I found a ferro rod style that works for me, or make or model, whatever. And um, anyway, so I figure some out there might want to see how this thing strikes or scrapes, whatever, on a ferro rod that they use. All right, as you can see, thing is a 3 8 rod just straight from China, about slam wore out. Let's give this a whirl. That in frame. There we go. Blingo. That's just a uh, inner poplar bark. over there watch this just a cheap Chinese rod all right one last thing before I call it a day I can't see <laughs> there we go I think and as you can tell um, I check the sharpness of my knives all the time so I don't have a lot of hair but even after all that, still takes hair. And I didn't think to show you beforehand, but uh, so obviously I haven't honed this. Uh, whoop. At all since I started. So. Bet you guys signed on to this video hoping to get a look at my arm hair, didn't you? Yeah, my coworkers, uh, they ask me sometimes, why do you just shave your left arm? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, my coworkers think I'm weird. Well, what do I say? I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Um, one stick fire, no problem. Um, bow drill, no problem. Simple notches. No problem. Um, in the kitchen, no problem. Uh, I mean, I guess if I had to pick a, a limiting factor, it would be its size. But, I mean, that's not a complaint. It's an EDC size blade, which is perfect for me in western North Carolina. Um, my EDC 
basically can't be my EDC basically can't be over three and a half inches long um, as far as edge length and not any more than seven or seven and a half inches long um, I'm sure someone will chime in here and correct me on that but uh, so I, as far as size wise it's perfect the blade geometry is awesome um, it, there's a learning curve there but I mean that's to be expected with just about any new knife to a person um, which the design of the knife is not something they've ever used before or anything even similar. Um, this is a whole unique design as far as I know it. Um, and it's, it rocks. Uh, Justin says he's going to put out a bigger version of this, a full-size bushcraft blade, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I don't need any more knives, but it's going to be pretty hard to not to, uh, not to pick that one up. Now, um, I own a lot of blades. Um, I've used quite a few more than that, and you know, I don't claim to be a master with a knife by any stretch of the imagination. I feel like I'm fairly decent, especially with the ones that I'm used to and use on a daily basis. Um, and I feel like I can say, at least for me, this is a whole unique design. I mean, it is, it rocks with everything it has done today. It has done a superb job. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I, the proof is in the pudding, you know, so. I don't really know what else to say aside from it as comfortable as anything. Um, it's the perfect size for an EDC blade, um, <laughs> and as my wife said, it's cute. Um, so the spine of the knife can't get any sharper, I don't think. Um, just look at this thing again, guys. This, you, it's, I think this is Justin's third knife that he's ever made, I think, maybe his fourth. Um, and just the, the attention to detail, uh, the uniformity of the handle, the curve, the curvature, um, just how well the, the uh, tang of the knife flushes in with the micarta handles or scales. I mean, you can run your fingernail across there and not tell that there's a, any difference in material. Um, the spacing on the pins or the hot tubes or whatnot, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. And I have zero complaints about this knife, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. It really is. I, I, it's everything I hoped it would be and more. Um, I know I'm going to get many years of use out of this. After using it today and seeing how that edge held up and was still able to shave hair after, I don't know, a one-stick fire, a bow drill set, and several several notches, I mean, that's uh, that, that tells me a lot right there. So, Justin, great job on the knife, bud. See you guys later.